Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Dragon Warrior 2 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Last episode, Prince Hermes and his cousin Orfeo found the Silver Key in the cave west of Kana Castle. Now they just got to get out of the cave, uh, which is going to be a little bit harder than uh, you would think because we're really low on magic points and uh, supplies. We don't have any more antidote herbs. And there's still a lot of enemies in here that can poison us, like this guy right here. Uh, his attack can sometimes uh, cause poison to occur in your characters. So I gotta save my uh, MP points uh, to cast Antidote. I only have one more casting because Antidote costs 3 uh, MP. If I had more uh, magic points, those uh, center pods are a good enemy to use the uh, fireball spell against because they have pretty high defense. So uh, that's a good way to just avoid that defense. Because uh, Fireball doesn't care about uh, an enemy's defense. Uh, otherwise, it takes Prince Hermes about two uh, swings to take one of those guys out. So, now unfortunately, I ended up getting poisoned here again. So, uh, in order, I'm just going to have to uh, suck up that damage that I take. Every four steps I take, uh, Prince Hermes will lose one hit point, so it's not that bad. And it also makes it a little bit more tolerable as I have the Wing of the Wyvern. The Wing of the Wyvern, uh, in the first game, took you back to Tantagel Castle. Tantagel Castle is the only place you can save though in the first game. In this game, the Wing of the Wyvern takes you to the last place that you save. In our case, it'll be uh, Kana Castle. We don't really have anything to do in Kana Castle, so uh, once I get to Kana Castle, I'm just going to head straight to the south to Leftwind. Leftwind is where I uh, have a door I need to open. Uh, with the silver key. I also want to buy Prince uh, Orfeo some chain mail. Prince Hermes can also use the chain mail, but he's going to get an armor, an armor upgrade in the next uh, town. So I'm just going to save my money uh, for that armor upgrade. I'm not too worried about enemies around here uh, and the damage that Prince Hermes has taken from the poison because uh, the enemies here are pretty, pretty weak. They're not going to hurt us, even though they're the slimes, drakies, giant slugs, the ants. Uh, here's the uh, clinic. Uh, detoxification costs twice as much as an antidote herb. Uh, so it's cheap to always buy an antidote herb and just use it, but it might not be necessarily time uh, efficient. So, But if you don't have the inventory space, uh, you're going to have to use the, the detox clinic. So let's grab that chainmail. It'll be a good upgrade for uh, Prince uh, Orfeo for quite a while. So, and to use the key door, all you have to do is face the key, the door and then select the character with the key, and then uh, use the key. Keys in this game don't break, but I guess to like unlike the first game. Um, but the problem is, there's different doors in this game, so you gotta have different keys. It's not like one universal key like Dragon Quest 1. But of course, then it's balanced by, you know, you, uh, you have to buy, you have to, you know, hold on to three different types of keys. We have the silver key, the gold key, and then there's also gonna be the jail key. And the jail key opens like jail doors. There's a few other, like, keys, like there's a Watergate key, um, but those are like one-time use items uh, that you use for the plot. So now we're going to head back to uh, Middenhall Castle. Uh, there's some locked doors there. And uh, there's a shrine to the south of Middenhall Castle that we want to go to. Uh, we could have went to the shrine earlier, and in the shrine all that's there is basically a guy gives a clue as to where the silver key is at. So, I should have technically gone there earlier. Uh, the only one who points you in that direction is uh, there's going to be a tunnel that we're going to go through to get to the south through a river. It's kind of like the swamp tunnel in, in the last game. Um, if we go there without uh, our companion, the Prince of Canna, the guards there are blocked away and say, like, you know, you can't leave uh, here. And there's a guy wandering in there. If you talk with him, then he says, you know, hey, have you been in the shrine south of uh, Middenhall Castle, and uh, so that's kind of your clue to go there. So I'm just going to do that now. Uh, I'll show off that dialogue, because uh, there's something we need to show off in the bonus episode uh, later on, and so I'll show that dialogue that I missed there, uh, with the guards blocking you, I'll show that off 
you know, at the end. The dragon's bane is a magic charm. It is said that it may keep one safe from the spell. Oh, is a stone experience. Return here in thy need. Basically, what the dragon's bane does is it's kind of like the dragon's scale, but instead of giving you plus def two defensive points, it raises your resistance to sleep and stop spell. So let's check out the last uh, area here. There's our silver key. We head down these staircases. Now we're in the jail. Hermes, royalty should not venture into prison such as this. And we need to have uh, the jail key and uh, the gold key to talk with a prisoner down there in the uh, southern cell. Who's uh, really, uh, must have done something really bad. Because they're in like a water cell. Does thou have the jailer's key? No, be gone with thee. We say, yes, though, what does he say? Open this and I shall give thee some news. Okay, well, we'll have to come back then later on when we get the jailer's key. But for now, we're just going to head to the south, to the shrine uh, south of Middenhall here. It's kind of where they have the shrine down here, where they have it separated by uh, bridges. Because normally, you're just so used to Dragon Warrior 1, where they say, like, hey, avoid bridges. So, that probably kept me from going down this way. There's the guy here. Let's see what he has to say. Of keys and doors, I know this. There are silver keys and gold keys and doors to match them each. Seek thee first the silver key, for this is what I teach. The key is in the cave of the lake west of Canuck's walls. But go only with a friend, or you will fall. So, he's a little poet. He, he rhymes. Alright. So, now we uh, have all the information we need, and we're going to head to that um, tunnel system I was talking about. And that tunnel is uh, basically on the southern way. Remember when I said there was two ways to get to the lake uh, cave? If you go the southern route, uh, you'll run into that tunnel there. So, as I said, I'll show off the guards blocking you late, in, like I said, in the bonus episode. Uh, the glitch I want to show you in the bonus episode is that uh, speedrunners can kind of use is... Uh, if you name your character a certain name and set the message speed as fast, I believe the name is TUT, like T-U-T, all capital letters, what ends up happening is uh, all the uh, NPCs, the, uh, the townspeople and stuff, they always only move south, and you won't get into any random encounters. It locks off random encounters. Uh, so I'll just show that off. Uh, but then game, of course, the game will uh, soft lock uh, when you get to this one place where there's a forced encounter uh, a little bit later on. Uh, and I, I'll point that place out like multiple episodes later because it's not for a while. Uh, you have to do like a hard save to do, uh, to block, to keep that soft reset from happening, or that hard lock from happening. But So there's this area here. Hast thou travels taking thee to the mall in the south of Vinhall? Yes, and he says, please say nothing. If you say no, he says, my brother must be there. Well, no, not go to him. So yeah, if you try to walk through uh, before, like you said, yeah, the Prince of Canuck, those guards will step uh, to the right and to the left and block your passageway there. So the correct way to go is to go directly south. Uh, but if we take the uh, western passageway here, we just end up at a dead end. Back on the uh, overworld, though. But I'm not too bored because I'm going to have to fight for some gold and stuff. And the enemies here, they're all pretty weak. They're pretty much the enemies uh, that are outside uh, around the, the lake cave area. So, you know, the ghost mouses, the, the big rats. Uh, nothing that, you know, obviously we can't handle. Now to the south, uh, where we're going to, the enemies there are going to be really, really hard. Uh, especially for the level that we're at. Uh... But we'll be doing a lot of fighting there because the, uh, unfortunately, the equipment that we're going to get for uh, Prince Hermes and Orfeo there, uh, mainly Prince Orfeo, is really, really expensive. Oh, Prince Hermes is really, really expensive. So, Orfeo will actually get the best weapon he can use in the game uh, for the most part there. Uh, his strongest attack power weapon. So, remember what the guy said that. Uh, He's not really good with uh, weapons and armor, and the fact that we're getting his 
late game weapon uh, so early in the game should be an indication. So now some of the remakes they they change that up. They allow him to equip more weapons. Uh, but in the original NES version here, uh, the item that uh, gives the strongest attack power to him is the Iron Spear. Uh, and that's going to be available here in this next town. It's debatable whether uh, that's, uh, for the end game though, if that's his best weapon, because later on you can get a, um, a sword called the Falcon Sword. And the Falcon Sword, it gives less attack power, but allows him to attack twice. Uh, it's good when the toward uh, when you get really high levels with the prince because when they get really high levels with uh, Prince Orfeo, uh, his strength skyrockets. Uh, so then he can actually do a lot of damage. He can do more damage with the uh, thing. But uh, before that, his strength will be low, so he won't be doing a lot of damage uh, if you just get him the Falcon Sword. So he'll just be like tickling the enemies uh, rather than being able to overcome their defense with his uh, strength. So later, earlier in the episode, I ended up getting the stop spell. That was the last new spell that uh, Orfeo got at level eight. It's a good spell to use uh, against enemies like the magicians here. So for three MP, we get to basically block all these magician spells. Uh, so it's basically just uh, the same as uh, you know, so we cast a heal spell. We're not losing any uh, hit points. And magicians, they have uh, no resistance to uh, stop spell, so it'll always work on them. Toward the end game, though, there's some other magical type enemies that uh, will have some resistance, though. All right, a new town. Ghosts may wander this world under rural sun, and at even times may be recalled. Here in Hamlin, not all as it seems. Talk to everyone, for appearances may not reflect the true person's identity. Some say that there's a tall tower, and in a brave adventurer may find the Cloak of Wind. It can save thee if they fall from a great height. I'll explain that cloak a little bit later. Southwest of this village lies the Castle of Moonbrook. Here's this uh, thing. We want to probably buy another Wing of the Wyvern. Uh, Moonbrook's pretty far away, and then we have like a little mini quest to go on once we go to Moonbrook. Um, and like I said, the enemies here are really, really tough. Uh, and we're doing a little bit grinding off screen here. He said we we'll want to end up getting that iron spear for uh, Prince Orfeo, the broadsword, full plate armor, and steel shield for uh, Hermes. Not all at once here. A lot of the level grinding we're gonna do, we're going to do uh, later on when we get the princess. So just gotta say we have a lottery ticket, and uh, he tells us not to take it too seriously. Here's the lottery. We'll play a game on it real quick here, just to show what it's like, because I have two lottery tickets. Basically, the wheel spin is a match three game. If you, you try to match uh, three symbols in a row, depending on what symbols you match, you get uh, different things. So The one that we want is, uh, well, so if you get three sums, that's really good because you get the gold card. Basically, what the gold card is, is once you buy something, the shopkeeper will give you 25% uh, off. No, well, 25% back after you buy something. So once you buy something, like you bought that... Um, um, steel shield for a thousand. Uh, he charged a thousand, but then he'd give us two fifty back. After the sacking of Moonbrook, I escaped here and made my way here, hoping others would follow. There's a doggy there. What's interesting about this dog is when you talk with it, it starts to follow you around like a party member. Hmm. Maybe that uh, that dog isn't what it really seems. So this is the person we're going to save the game with, and as you can see, it's really close to the lottery. So what I'm going to do, basically, is I'm going to um, play the game, you know, reset, when I turn the game on, go down, play the lottery. Uh, if I don't win the lottery, then I'm going to uh, just reset and uh, keep trying until I win the prizes. So I'll see you next time. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.